Cora TV. The world is thinking. Here's one for you, for you Jerry. Um, my 10-year-old boy loves to play shooting games like Call of Duty. Will this cause my kid to develop violent and aggressive tendencies? No, um, but to give a little more, <laughs> a little fuller answer, uh, it, it, violence is such, we, is such a powerful topic now, um, difficult to pick our way even through the conversation about it. We are really, as a society and a culture, fascinated, preoccupied with violence this, this past generation or so. I mean, we always have been to an extent, but the, the degree of tension around it is so high now. And not, not just violence in entertainment, but in the news. You know, the fact that if something terrible happens, as at Virginia mm -hmm. Tech, this, this is all we hear about for some time. Um, not passing judgment on that, but just noticing that our, our fascination for stories of violence is so powerful. And then even the amount of energy and time we spend talking about how to be less violent or how violence is bad is, is very high these days. So as you know, it, adults are fascinated with violence and kids know this. Um, the degree to which kids in school now are taught, you know, use your words, not your hands, don't fight. I mean, these are good messages, but there is a there is a pressure and there's a management of kids' passions and emotions that m previous generations didn't have. So kids now grow up understanding that this whole vast number of these topics called violence, which is everything from shoving a playmate to acts of, of you know, physical destruction of others, um, are a big deal. They know it's a big deal with us. And often what we fall into is we want to be obsessed with violence. We want to be talking to our kids about it in a sort of a nervous way, in a way that they often find frightening. But then we don't want them to play with it or fantasize about it or think about it. And it's, it's somewhat like what, how we were handling sexuality 100 years ago. It's this obsession with it on the one hand, but then a belief that kids somehow will not bring it into their minds or their games uh, if we act like it's not there for them. Um, so it's normal that kids are going to be interested in these things. Now, what we have to do as parents and as entertainers and uh, what our legislators have to look at too is what kind of violence might be disturbing for what age. Um, when you have this word, this the V word, violence, spread over everything from Grand Theft Auto to Pokemon, which often if you just look at criticisms of games or even the ratings, that word, that same word is used as an umbrella for such a vast variety of different uh, story forms. Um, I think we kind of paralyze ourselves. We get to where we can't really think straight about it. I think every little kid is interested, uh, at least most little kids, are, are very interested in fantasies of conflict, of resilience, of being able to survive hardship, of head-to-head -head good guy, bad guy stuff. This is basic, this is very developmentally appropriate material. And they will outgrow that, they will become more nuanced in their worldview. Uh, and around, in adolescence, kids will start to become fascinated by the things that used to scare them, that used to freak them out, or that scare their parents, or that parents are squeamish about. There's a very natural progression around puberty and a little bit after into wanting to see horror movies or war movies or play these violent games because there's a desire, okay, this used to scare me, this used to be forbidden to me, now I know it's just fantasy, now I can connect with it and it doesn't scare me and I can use it and put it down. Now this is, this is different from those few kids who become morbidly obsessed with these things, but I think as a part of adolescence and early adulthood, it's, it's pretty normal stuff. And the more we worry about it, of course, the more they have to do it. I mean, there's a, there's a definite, I think one of the things that's hard when you're trying to make the world less violent is the understanding that as our parental anxieties go up, kids need to figure out what it's about goes up too, and so th there's a relationship. Now as to whether a 10 year old, you know, a 10 year old looking at something that's fairly intense, um, has real death, has realistic people dying, there you're getting into more of an area where I think parents, families have to make some decisions. I think some kids can roll with that just fine. I think some kids could be disturbed by it. Um, I think unless your child is showing signs of being genuinely paranoid or delusional or 
you know, obsessive about violence, I don't think you have to worry about the shooter game turning your kid into a shooter. But I think what you do want to think about is, are you, is the kid being scared? Is the kid taking away some images that are a little bit hard to process at that age? Um, and there, again, it's largely about knowing your child. Um, the research that's out there suggests that kids are m more disturbed by violence that looks very realistic or that seems to suggest it might be close to home. Anything that seems to show violence against children is particularly disturbing. Uh, the more fantastic it is, the more cartoony it is, the less of a problem it is in general. Um, so that's, it, I, again, going back to the simple answer, no, the shooter games, I do not believe, turn people into shooters, and, and nothing in the research supports the idea that they do. I think that's become a political football lately, that kind of, uh, the kind of argument. But there are questions about what, what kinds of stress and what kinds of fear and what kinds of difficulty is this bringing to kids. Right. 